Here at the Eye Opener, we always have an eye out for potential dangers on the road ahead. With that in mind, Democratic Party spokesman Rachel Maddow has identified one of the greatest potential dangers to the stability of the U.S. homeland. Nullification. Now, so many of the hallmarks of the Civil War and of the Confederacy are in political fashion again. Nullification, which helps steer South Carolina into its militant anti-U.S. stance. Nullification is now enjoying a remarkable renaissance. Helpfully, Maddow has also identified the roots of this evil nullification idea in the Civil War. The great pride of the South Carolina secessionists was this guy, this guy with the teen idol good looks, Senator John C. Calhoun, the beloved pro-slavery politician who was South Carolina's greatest political export at that time. He had been vice president of the United States, secretary of state, secretary of war, and as well as being a rabid proponent of slavery, John Calhoun, to that end, championed the cause of nullification nullification, the idea that states could and should refuse to follow federal laws they didn't like, that they thought went beyond the powers of the federal government. That's right. Slavery. Neo-Confederates. Bloodshed. Did we mention slavery? Oh, and racism. That's what nullification is all about. Oh, sure, there are those like Michael Meharry of the Tenth Amendment Center who will argue that this portrayal of nullification as a pro-slavery movement actually gets the history of the idea precisely 180 degrees opposite to the truth. The truth of the matter is that slavery always depended on centralized power. It was always the centralized power of the United States enforcing slavery, and in truth, it was actually states asserting their sovereignty that fought back against slavery abolitionists were very strong advocates of state sovereignty because they recognized it as a way to break down this federal power that was preserving the, the slave institution. But you shouldn't listen to him because he's a tenther. Don't know what a tenther is? Whatever you do, don't look up their ideas at tenthamendmentcenter.com. Like truther, birther, prepper, or any of those other scary ER words, it must refer to some kooky philosophy that you don't have to bother investigating. Just remember, tenther equals slavery. One of the most prominent of these neo-Confederate tenther agitators is Tom Woods, a Harvard and Columbia-educated New York Times best-selling extremist who has written an entire book on the subject, which you definitely should not purchase from TomWoods.com. Thankfully, one of our top reporters managed to sit down with him for a hard-hitting interview to expose his crank ideas for the wild lunacy that they are. Welcome to Interview with a Zombie. Today, Dr. Thomas Woods discusses his new book, Nullification. Dr. Woods holds a bachelor's degree in history from Harvard and his master's and PhD from Columbia University. And now, your host, a zombie. Book. All right, let me come at this from a totally different angle. Let's look at the causes on behalf of which nullification was employed in the 19th century, beginning with 1798, the late 18th century, when it was first sort of codified, as it were, in the Virginia and Kentucky uh, resolutions. What did Jefferson and Madison fight against in those resolutions? Well, they're, basically, they're fighting against violations of free speech by the federal government. So nullification is being used on behalf of free speech. It's used on behalf of free trade. It's used to fight against unconstitutional searches and seizures. It's used to fight against the prospect of military conscription, to fight against the prospect of children being enlisted in the military without the consent of their parents. And as we've seen earlier, it was used to fight against the fugitive slave law. So it's a complete, you know, when you use terms like neo-Confederate, which is just like one of these sort of zombie terms, well, p pardon me, I withdraw that statement. I, no, I, no, you're right. But it is one of these terms that people just throw out because they think it'll just shut down all debate. If I utter this term, no one will be able to continue debate. But I don't Racism. know. Racism. I'm thinking maybe we're really not making progress here. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to make arguments that are at least reasonably thought-provoking, and you're just throwing... Racism. Yeah, see, you're just throwing code words at me and scary-sounding propaganda words. See, that's not an argument. That, no, that does not count as an argument. I've already answered all this. Neo no, that, no, that is not a substitute for an argument. You try to do this all the time. 
And yet, despite having his ideas so thoroughly discredited by our reporters' hard-hitting questions, people like Woods and Meharry and others continue to discuss ways that this idea can be used to undermine the peaceful actions of the loving federal government. The California Senate just made history after unanimously voting to reject the NDAA's indefinite detention clause. The new measure says that the state will, quote, refuse to provide material support for or to participate in any way with the implementation of any federal law that purports to authorize indefinite detention of a person within California. South Carolina has passed a bill that criminalizes the implementation of Obama's health care reform law in a vote of 65 to 39. The state's House legislators passed the South Carolina Freedom of Health Care Protection Act. It renders the Affordable Care Act null and void. It could potentially see criminal penalties issued to those who attempt to implement it. Just jury nullification is a process whereby a jury in a criminal case effectively nullifies a law by acquitting a defendant regardless of the weight of evidence against him or her. In short, if you are serving on a jury, you can vote to acquit a defendant if you believe that the person is being prosecuted under an unjust law. In North Carolina, a Republican legislator is trying to move legislation to abolish federal currency in favor of North Carolina dollars. He wants a state currency, a Confederate currency, rather than federal currency. Your Yankee dollars are no good here. Last year, a Republican state legislator in South Carolina introduced legislation mandating that gold and silver coins replace federal currency in the state. According to a recent report from the website Talking Points Memo, at least 10 states have introduced gold coins as currency bills. Just last month, an Idaho man was convicted of conspiring against the U.S. government by manufacturing and selling his own Confederate currency called Liberty Dollars. Is nothing sacred anymore? Do these people not realize that federal laws like the Patriot Act and Obamacare and the NDAA are passed by our wise and benevolent overlords only after thoughtful and careful deliberation? And you need look no further than the fact that we were given a total of six minutes to read this bill before we had to vote on it. Not one single senator who voted for it had read it. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it away from the fog of the controversy. How could Congress pass this Patriot Act without even reading it? Sit down, my son. Uh, we don't read most of the bills. Even worse, the idea is now in the hands of those silly conspiracy theorists that believe the NSA is actually breaking the law by spying on all of their communications. As we know, this crazy theory has been thoroughly debunked by federal officials themselves. Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not. Not wittingly. But that's not enough to satisfy these rabid defenders of the Fourth Amendment. Fourthers? Now they've started their own campaign at offnow.org to nullify the NSA by turning off the taps, literally, on the agency and its resources. Fact. The new NSA data center in Utah requires 1.7 million gallons of water every single day to operate. Billions of Fourth Amendment violations need massive computers and the water to cool them. That water is being supplied by the state of Utah. Fact. There's absolutely nothing in the Constitution which requires your state to help the feds violate your rights. Our message to Utah? Turn it off. No water equals no NSA data center. Visit offnow.org. Amazingly, this idea actually seems to be catching on with the public. As Michael Meharry told James Corbett of the insane conspiracy theory website CorbettReport.com yesterday, the campaign is already bearing fruit in various state legislatures and striking a chord with the public. Well, I'm thrilled with the progress that we're making. I think when we spoke last, there was one state that had indicated that uh, a representative or a senator there actually was going to run this piece of legislation, and that was the state of Arizona. Since we spoke last, two other states have actually pre-filed the bills. We have Oklahoma and we have the state of California. And the California bill is really exciting because it's actually a bipartisan effort. There's a uh, 
senator that's in the Democratic Party. There's a senator from the Republican Party. They've come together. They've said, you know what? We believe that this is an important issue, enough important to put aside all of the differences that we may have and work together to get this passed in the state of California. So it's an extremely significant uh, uh, development. And I really do think that this bill has a possibility of getting passed in the state of California. We also have two states that have introduced legislation that just deal with that second aspect of NSA spying that I mentioned, the data sharing, and that's Kansas and Missouri. The Kansas is a, actually a piece of legislation that would do exactly what I said. It would prohibit any of this type of information being used in state courts. It would make it inadmissible. Uh, Missouri is taking a little different approach. They're looking at passing a constitutional amendment, which would make electronic data part of its constitution's search and seizure clause. And it would effectively do the same thing as the legislation, but it would constitutionalize it. So we have those states that are on board already, and I can't spill all of the beans yet, but I happen to know that we're going to have some very exciting news coming up in the next week of other states that are getting on board on this and, and pretty significant states as well. So we're definitely seeing a lot of movement. I really expect a number of states are going to be on board with this before it's all said and done. As worrying as this development is for the federal government, though, the bigger danger is that this is the thin edge of the wedge for a movement that is gaining ground. What's next after this? Police agencies refusing federal funds to provide their law enforcement officials with tanks and riot gear and sound cannons? County sheriffs refusing the TSA permission to grope, humiliate, and sexually harass passengers in their airports? Individuals rejecting imaginary obligations to pay the federal government the blood money needed to keep the military-industrial complex running? I think we know where all of this is heading. A neo-Confederate reinstitution of slavery itself in the USA. Nullify NSA is going to bring slavery back because yep, it is related yep, to nullify blah, blah. <laughs> and then it's, no, it's related to some cessationism. You nullify NSA, damn it, you're going to bring slavery. You're going to have plantations everywhere. And guess what? <laughs> Abortion is going to be completely illegalized. That's, what, that's what's going to happen if you go and say nullify NSA. Did we mention racism and slavery? This whole 10th Amendment move in, the, the nullification stuff, people talking openly about secession, states in the South minting their own currency. That's the kind of stuff that we have not seen every year. There seems to be an upsurge of that now. Well, I mean, I, I think we'd be foolish to imagine that this is uncorrelated with having an African-American president. And so, dear viewer, consider yourself warned. There is a nullification movement taking shape that is seeking to undermine the authority of the federal government to continue transforming the country into a tyrannical police state. And do you really want that to happen? If so, then the previous spokesman for the federal government has a warning for you. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. This has been a public service announcement made possible by the subscribers and supporters of BoilingFrogsPost.com. Unless you agree with the nullifiers, please don't subscribe to the website today.